That's tight. That is nice and tight. <laughs> That's a good guitar so, face you got going on there. <laughs> oh, man. So good. Who's that? It is the Fearless Flyers, uh, which, I, uh, man, I, I feel like, I don't know whether, whether this is like a Corey Wong side project or what the deal is, but uh, it's, well, so this is interesting because, um, yeah, Corey Wong, there we go. Is it, is so it Joe the, Dart also? Yeah, Joe Dart on bass, yeah. Nate Smith on drums, and don't tell me it's, uh, I'm just looking this up, don't tell me it's uh, Mark Letary, of course it is, Mark Letary, who is from Snarky Puppy, right? Right. So oh, wow, this is... It's Snarky Puppy and Wolfpack. And Wolfpack, kind correct. This is this is why I love Fearless Flies so much. So uh, this song is called Nate Smith, who's the drummer. Nate Smith is the ace of aces by Fearless Flies. So this is basically like... I th I, I call um, Snarky Puppy like jazz funk for people with ADD, right? Because like... Like you get into a groove in their song and then all of a sudden you take a like dramatic left hand turn. It's like, how the hell do we get here? Right. Well, these guys are like jazz funk for people with ADD on acid, right? <laughs> and the, the, everything is just like four to the floor, slammed hard, and I love them. They're called the Fearless Flies and that was a song called Nate Smith is the Ace of Aces. So Joe Dart on bass, Nate Smith on drums, Corey Wong and Mark Letary on guitar. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Joe Dart is, he's the real deal, that guy. Yeah. He can play some bass. Yeah, yeah. He is, he's legendary. They're, they're, um, I just love listening to, and, you know, you watch like Snarky Puppy or Volpec play and they are playing for their own enjoyment. You know yeah. what I mean? Like they just, they, uh, I'm using the wrong microphone. How about we do this? There we go. Now I'm on the right Troy, microphone. Troy's here. Troy showed up. That's going to make a big difference. And I'm going to attempt to turn my air conditioner off, which I can't because the remote battery's we flat. Can, um, maybe Max can, but I can't hear it. This is better. This is better. So luckily we haven't started recording the podcast yet because this is the microphone we want to be using. Uh, how you doing, brother? Now, is it like it's Thanksgiving? It's Thanksgiving in the States tomorrow. Is that right? Tomorrow. Thanksgiving Eve today. Yeah, this is the so, day, everybody. Explain this to me like I'm six. What the hell is Thanksgiving? Where did it come from? How did it start? What do you do? So is it just there, a, are, an there are legends about how it started, and and some of them aren't too kind to the Native Americans, but um, I'm not I'm not really sure what the true story of how it really started. I don't think anybody really truly knows how Thanksgiving started, um, but it's been around forever, and it's just the third Thursday of Thanksgiving of uh, November. We shut it down and we get together with family or friends and we watch American football, which is the best football. The third and or the fourth? It's got to be the fourth. It's the fourth uh, Thursday. It must right? be the fourth. Yeah, the fourth. The last fourth Thursday, Thursday in November. Yeah, right? yeah last Thursday. Uh -huh. um, and we, it's all about family, uh, traditional foods, you know, so a lot of food and um, football. And, you know, some people get together with the friends instead of their family and, just being grateful. And the reason it's my favorite holiday is because it's about those things. And it's not about, I don't have to buy anything for anybody. I don't have to be, be um, like remembering the vet, the veterans or remembering these people or remembering like, it's not about anything like that. And it's certainly not religious or political. So it's just like a day to be grateful and you know how I am about gratitude and thankfulness mm -hmm. and all that stuff. So like, it's just a day to focus on that and be around your family and just chill and take the next day off too, because it's a Friday. So, hmm. uh, uh, so, uh, 
I'm going to say here, I'm reading from Wikipedia, which is a trusted source of information, yeah. that it's been celebrated nationally on and off since 1789 with a proclamation by President George Washington after a request by Congress. What well, did Congress just needed a day off, did they? So they requested mm -hmm. a, a, an annual holiday. Okay. Thomas Jefferson chose not to observe the holiday until, uh, and so the celebration was intermittent, until Abe Lincoln in 1863 proclaimed a national day of thanksgiving and praise to our benefit, benef, beneficent father, who dwelleth in the heavens, calling on the American people to also, with humble penitence for our national perverseness and disobedience, fervently implore the interposition of the almighty hand to heal the wounds of the nation. So there, we go. there you go. So uh, that's right. the kickstart. So, but it, now it's not, you know, back then everything was about the almighty in the heavens and yeah. now not so much. So it's not a religious thing not these days. Not for not for most people. Right. So, um, you know, in Australia, when we have a public holiday, it's usually around like a horse race or a football game or there's some kind of betting or gambling going on. Um, but what you're telling me here is that this is just an excuse to have dinner with family and friends and be grateful. Yeah, and we do watch a lot of no. football. There's there's there'll be there'll be several football games on tomorrow. Huh. And then uh, actually it's also the kind of the unofficial start of the holiday season for, for, for Christmas. Right. Got and it. it's black Friday and all the sales and all that. So uh -huh. our stores, our stores are nuts. You know, we, you guys see all the internet black Friday stuff, yeah. but you know, you try to go to a store around here, you know, you just, you don't do it unless you're crazy. So Thanksgiving, black Friday, and then cyber Monday. Yep. And then, Four weeks time, Christmas, right? This yeah. is this yeah. is like a dress rehearsal for Christmas, right? Pretty much. Hmm. Interesting. There we go. Um, yeah. Well, so it's uh, it sounds uh, it sounds. I was hoping that there would be, you know, for, I mean, truthfully, I was hoping that there would be more um, symbolism or more kind of, um, you know, more meaning around the holiday. Uh, but it doesn't. It sounds like it's just something that's kind of evolved over time, and it's now a nationally observed day, but it doesn't really have a hell of a lot of meaning. You know, it's not not like it's not like an important part of the history of the nation, right? It's not like independence. Not, not, no, no, not like that. It's not a national. No, no, no nothing like that. Right. And uh, in Canada, they do it uh, at the start of the harvest in mid-October. Yes, because Wikipedia did say it was originally a harvest festival. Mm -hmm. So is this like, does this tie in with harvest season in the States? No, it's a little late for that now, I think. I'm not sure. Right. I'm not sure it's always been November. Right. Oh. Jaden says food and murica and football, that's all the meaning you need. Throw some family in there. Family in there too. Oh, yeah, family. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us on the eve of Thanksgiving here for the Agency Hour live in the Digital Mavericks Facebook group. Um Today, we are going to talk about automations. Ah, yes. Yes, automations. And uh, specifically, we're going to talk about automations in agency life. And specifically, we're going to talk about what you can automate, some of the things you can't automate. And then we're going to talk about some of the things you shouldn't automate, even if you can automate them. Uh, so let's first of all talk about why, like how, why is automation beneficial in the first place? What, 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 what's the benefit of having things automated? Well, I'm going to throw you under the bus right now. No, it can, it, it, uh, it can standardize processes and how things get done. If you, you know, automations are going to do things the same way over and over and over again. And if it's a repeatable test like that, then it saves somebody the time and effort of doing it and the possibility of doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So, you know, it depends on what you're automating, but that's, that's basically what it boils down to for me. Like if we can automate something that makes somebody's job easier, then we'll, we'll try to do that. Right? So, so uh, consistency. Mm hmm. Right? To, like if you're doing the same thing over and over again and it needs to be done exactly the same way and you can automate it, then, then you know, that's one advantage is that the robot will generally do it the same way every time because we program the robot to do it that way, right? Right. And and most, I mean, yeah. in my business, most, most uh, automations that we have are 
just interaction between from one tool to another. So, you know, just sending a message to some other tool to kick off some process or to notify me or to notify somebody else on the team that something needs to get done or somebody needs to be contacted, something along those lines. Mm -hmm. And, um, and also automation uh, frees up the human yes. to uh, do more human stuff, right. like be creative, solve right. problems, you know, talk to customers. Yeah. Which yep. the robots aren't particularly good at. No. The robots aren't particularly good at thinking for themselves or talking to customers, right? Right. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so let, let's let's dive in and give me some examples of things that you can automate. Rather, let's not talk about whether you should. By the way, we're gonna we're gonna do a run through of uh, an email follow up sequence. Uh, a little bit later in the show, we're going to do a run through of an email uh, follow up sequence that we teach, and I'm, we're going to kind of do a bit of a deep dive as to which parts of this you should automate, and which parts we think that you probably shouldn't, and why, and what to do instead of automating the emails. Right. So stay with us for that. It's going to be riveting, I'm sure. Uh, what What are some of the things that you can automate in the agency let's let's give the people some examples of things that you can automate to save time or to make sure things happen in a consistent fashion. So um, can and maybe shouldn't or, you know. Just can. Whether you can or whether you should. Yeah, or shouldn't. yeah whether you can. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like, so there's probably parts of the sales process that you could probably automate. Um, mm. Maybe automate outreach with mm -hmm. email nurturing systems and all those kinds of things. Um, mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. can automate parts of your care plan, like, how you communicate with your clients, how you communicate, how you assign tasks. Some mm -hmm. of that can be automated. Um, uh, like you said, the, the email nurture sequence for pro project for proposals and things like that. Um, that's about all I've ever really tried to automate in my business. I don't know what other. So talk about outreach for a second. We, I have an automated sequence that uh, finds me a lead and then I'm not going to – I won't do a deep dive into the actual tools that we use because this is a whole other conversation. I actually do have this plan to do this later on for the agency hour, a whole deep dive into how we do this. But what I have is I have a, an automation that finds me a lead – a list of leads predominantly from the LinkedIn database, right? So I get a list of uh, 25 leads a day that are, I don't need to go find those leads. It's completely automated and it comes into a, a, a dashboard and I have a look at those 25 leads and I quickly scan them. And as long as I don't recognize any names as being our existing customers, which I don't because I have an exclusion list loaded into this platform so if anyone's on the exclusion list the software just ignores them and so far that's working so i get this list of 25 leads i quickly scan through them and approve them i manually approve the leads it takes me like less than 20 seconds to scan the list and go yep bang bang and then what happens is i have a i have a uh so there's one software tool that finds me the leads, brings those leads into another platform that puts them on a dashboard. I look through them and go, yeah, bang, uh, all good. And then what happens is this other platform visits the LinkedIn profile of those 25 leads, right? So the person is like, oh, who's this Troy Dean that's visited my LinkedIn profile? Then a day later, I send them either a connection request or a message if we're already connected, right? And the message, the, in, the, the connection request and the message are basically, uh, in fact, I'll read the, uh, the, the connection request says something like, hey, Pete, looks like we're both in the agency space. Would love to connect, smiley face. If we're already connected, it says, hey, Pete, 
Looks like we're both in the agency space. Thought you might find our agency Facebook group interesting. We recently interviewed so-and-so about topic X, Y, Z. Are you the right person to share this with? So I'm just looking for a response, right? Now, are these automated? Automated. These are all automated, okay. These are all automated. So I visit their LinkedIn profile. The robot visits their LinkedIn profile. Then a day later, it either sends them a, a, a connection request or a message based on, you know, if I'm already connected with them, if, if it, it knows, it looks at the LinkedIn API and goes, hey, Troy's already connected with this person, so send them this message. Troy's not connected, so invite them to connect. And the message is generic enough that it's going to appeal to anyone who is on that list of leads that I manually approve because they're all in the web design, SEO, digital agency space, right? They're, they're all agency owners. My list of leads, the criteria is they need to be an agency owner or founder or CEO, right? Then a day later, I send them an email because I get double verified email addresses from my lead generator software, right? And the email, so imagine this, you, 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 I visit your profile, your LinkedIn profile, and, I, and then a day later I send you a message on LinkedIn, and then a day later I send you an email that says, hey, Pete, I pinged you on LinkedIn the other day and thought I'd follow up here. Thought you might find our agency Facebook group interesting. Are you familiar with guest name? I interviewed him recently about topic X, Y, Z. Are you the right person to share this with? It's exactly the same message that I just sent mm -hmm. on LinkedIn yesterday. Yeah. Right. And then I wait a couple of days and I ping them back on LinkedIn and say, hey, Peter, I emailed you the other day and thought I'd follow up here again. Are you the right person to share this with? Here's the link. Love you to contribute to the conversation. Come and join our Facebook group. And then a final email a couple of days after that saying, okay, you got me. Maybe you're not interested in our Facebook group. If there's a magic trick I could send you right now, what would it be? And again, just looking for a response. Yeah, just a response, yep. Right. Just, a, just a pulse. <laughs> exactly, correct. Yeah. So those... They are messages that I would send anyway. Right. Right. And in fact, these are messages that I have been, I've been doing this sequence manually before I automated it. Which, and which I just is got, something I would suggest anyway. Yeah. And anything you're going to automate. Yeah. 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 I just got, I just, it was like, fuck, I just can't keep doing this every day. It's like, it's boring and it's driving me crazy. And I do like five of them and I'm, because I have ADD, I'm like, I'm bored. I want to go hassle Pete. And I get into Slack and start abusing people. And, uh, so I just automate it now. And the robot does the work for me. Yeah. Another uh, automation that is often used in sales processes are chatbots. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that, whether it's Messenger or on your on your website, like that's an automation. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Pre-qualifying um, someone before we good. connect yep. them that's with a human. questions before you let them yep. in the door, right? Yeah. And then, of yeah. course, the one that we all use, or you should be using probably, is some sort of calendar booking. I mean, that's an automation too. Yeah, yeah. right, exactly. So booking. And that, and that saves a lot of time. <laughs> I'm available at two. Well, I'm not. I'm yeah. not available till three. You're like, it's like crazy. So, so there was this 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 thing called amy.ai. Um, I remember hearing about and, that when it came out. And uh, the whole point of Amy.ai was to uh, uh, handle that, like to have yeah. that conversation with, for you in your, in, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's right. I don't know if it still exists, but and it uh, supposedly Amy would AI even work with multiple, work. with multiple people booking a meeting. So that, cause that's, yes. that's always a big headache. That's right. That's right. And uh, I, I, I'm like, I don't know, like, it just felt like uh, x.ai. There we go. x.ai it was. Yeah. x.ai. And um, I don't know. It still feels really plinky. It's like I still have to read emails. Right. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like, exactly. Like, yeah. Like, yeah, so you know, x.ai doesn't exist anymore. It now redirects to bizabo.com. Um, so they pivoted um, because the if I – so here's the thing. Here, here's a good example of what you can automate and what I think you shouldn't. Right? You can automate people booking in your calendar because you give them your Calendly link and they book in and then they get the reminders. They get the email reminders. You can send them text reminders. You know, we normally send a text reminder 10 minutes before someone's booked into a call to say, hey, remember, we've got this call coming up in 10 minutes. Please make sure you turn up, you know, because we're busy and, we're, we're, you know, otherwise we're going to make the calendar spot available for someone else, which is a true story, right? 
uh, and we send an email a day before and, you know, we just nurture that lead to make sure they turn up. However, what we do is we typically now, it, it's, it's, it's rare that we send the calendar link to people. What we typically do is we chat with them over, over chat mm-hmm. and we give them some options. We say, hey, we can do Thursday 2 p.m., Thursday 4 p.m. or Friday 11 a.m. Eastern time, what, which one works for you? And they tell us and then we book them in using our calendar Using link. the form, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So all the reminders and the nurture sequence of emails and text messages is still uh, is still automated, right? But the actual booking them in is not automated. Uh, we do that. We, we call it the concierge experience. And that's purely because we found that, and I think this happened, and we'll talk about the pandemic and how that's impacted automations, but we found that people just weren't booking in. People just stopped booking in. Whereas if we reach out to them and we book them in, so we, we get way more. I mean, we just wouldn't yeah. get we just wouldn't get bookings if we don't. Yeah, for, we don't. And, for, and for sales. But 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 if you're working on a project and the client, you know, wants to have a meeting with you, I would just send them the the link. You don't have to do it that way. You know. Yeah, that's for sale. You, you're talking about for sales process. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. 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 That's right. Yeah. Um. So some of the, what do you guys, let us know in the, in the comments, what yeah. do you guys automate that's working really well? Um, I'll give you another example. We, I signed up with a company recently called startpack.io and they have gone through the process of uh, what they do is they register you as an LLC in the States. So we are now a, we are now a registered LLC in Wyoming and um <laughs> And, it's, a good um, as pla- it's the good a place as any. Yeah, there you go. And uh, and um, they we went through a, a a whole process with them. They set up our Stripe account. They set up our bank account. They set up. They do all the paperwork, right? But what happened is, as soon as I paid and filled in their onboarding form and landed on the thank you page, within thirty seconds, I received an email saying that they had shared a Google Drive folder with me. And that wow. is automated, right? So now we have a shared Google Drive folder and all my stuff just gets put into Google Drive, like manually logging into Google Drive and creating a folder and naming it Agency Mavericks LLC is something that they could do manually, but why when you just automate it? Because it's something that needs to happen repetitively. It's, you know, the robot's going to do it consistently. Yep. And so that yep. was, uh, I was like, oh, that's a nice automation. That's yep. that's Basically that's what a robot should be doing. A part of the onboarding process. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, James Murgatroyd says onboarding email sequence with intake forms for passwords yep. and stakeholder names and info. Yep. 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 Uh, onboarding process and sending client prep work says Chetsoni Brooks. Yep. What What is the client prep work, Chetsoni? Cool name, by the way. What is the client prep work that you send? Uh, that you send. What is the client prep work? So onboarding is a, is a great client onboarding is a great example of, yep. of things that you can automate. Um, I, I, I will say this though, <laughs> this is an example of where things can go a little bit funky, right? We, I hired an agency once, a content agency who I've been chatting with a guy of a messenger and I'm like, all right, I'm going to pull the trigger. And I, and he said, all right, here's the link. Just go sign up. And so I went and signed up and paid and it was five o'clock PM my time. I was about to knock off for the day and go and have dinner with the kids and you know, five o'clock in a house with a four-year-old and an 18-month-old is freaking mayhem, right? And on the thank you page, there was an intake form that I had to fill in that, and he, and, and there was a video saying, hey, thanks for signing up, blah, blah, blah. Here's the intake form. We need some information from you to get started. Don't close this page because if you do, you won't see it again. Like this, this form only exists on this page. So please fill in the intake form. I'm like, okay, cool. No worries. Uh, I'm listening. He, he then says it should take about 45 minutes to fill in the intake form. I'm like, fuck what? Dude, why didn't you tell me that in messenger before I signed up? I would have signed up tomorrow morning. I haven't got 45 minutes to sit here now. Right. And that means I have to go and have dinner with the kids, put the kids to bed and then come back and do this tonight. 
because if I close this page, I'm never going to see it again. Right. Now this is a really bad customer experience. Yeah. Like you should have told me that before I signed up and I would have done it tomorrow morning in the office when I have 45 minutes to fill in your intake form. Right. So, you know, I have a better idea. Let's get on a call and do the intake on a call. Yeah. Right. I'm not a big fan of 45 minute intake no. forms. No. I would rather talk to a human being, answer your questions, and you fill in the intake form for me because I just hired you. Right. Right. Two, two or three questions is one thing. There's a 45 minute, no. Yeah. I'm even like, I even look at client onboarding which is a whole different conversation because it depends on what you're onboarding them for. But I look at client onboarding. We had an onboarding. We had a great onboarding experience with Hirsch Marketing. It was a call with their team. It was a call with the strategist. It was a call with the media buyer and it was a call with the creative team. There were four people on the call plus myself and Emily. And it was a call that they recorded and I just talked and they made a bunch of notes afterwards and sent it back to us. That's a great onboarding experience. I don't like filling in big long forms. I would suggest that you ditch the massive client onboarding form, have a checklist for an onboarding client onboarding session and actually and have a call. I mean, it builds relationships on top of everything. On, on top of all the other things, it's going to start building the relationships. And, Correct. And Correct. setting tone, like setting tone yeah. for how the thing's going to go. And, right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, Emily says they did Emily have they, they had an intake form. Well, I don't. They, they might have, but I certainly don't remember spending forty five minutes filling in their their intake form. Right? I love the idea of completing intake form for the client on the call. Yeah. So you know, when you're on a call with someone, you can go, "Hey, we need all your assets. We need your your current. Do you have a current style guide? No. Okay. Do you have logos? Oh, uh, yeah. We've got a logo on the website. Okay. Do you have that file anywhere else? No. Well, then guess what you go get the file off their website and save it into your Google Drive folder for them. Mm -hmm. right? That's called customer experience. That's called customer service. Right? <laughs> Emily spent the 45 minutes That's doing the said. intake form. Excellent. I'm glad someone did. Um, so, uh, you know, the other, uh, the other one is the website worksheet, which is something we teach in the blueprint. The website worksheet is essentially an automated pre-qualifying process. Right as part of the sales process, right? I had, a, um, I had a, um, an epiphany a few years ago when my brother, who is a general manager of a large nonprofit in Adelaide, he reached out to me and he said, hey, man, we're running these little workshops for corporates to help them identify early signs of mental health issues with their staff, right? And we're pitching this to large corporates and we think we need a little like a basic kind of five-page website to explain the program so that when we go and do a sales presentation, we can say, hey, check out the website and then people can inquire and say, yeah, we want you to come run a workshop for us. And I said, no worries. Well, before you do anything, go to, uh, you know, troydane.com.au slash get started or whatever it was and fill in the website worksheet and just tell me a little bit more about it. And he said, yeah, no worries. So anyway, he, he and the guy that was running the program, his colleague who was running the program, they sat down and they did the website worksheet together. He said it took them about an hour to answer the questions, right? Because they really thought about it and they really put a lot of, because this was a new project for them. They're like, mm -hmm. hey, we're really good thing about this. He rang me afterwards and he said, dude, you should charge people to walk them through filling in that form. He said, that was the most valuable exercise we've done. He said, we hadn't just taken the time to sit down and work out what the success criteria is for this project. He said, that was incredibly valuable. And that was that moment I was like, right, I'm just going to turn this into a discovery workshop and sell it as a discovery yeah. workshop. It's yeah. the same thing. Well, and, and the benefit there is you'll be there with them and able to add value at the same time. Correct. Instead of them Correct. just randomly answering, they, they can be guided by you. Yeah, exactly. Um, some, of the things I, some of the things you can automate that I like automating is what you were saying before, Pete, is the movement of information between tools. Yeah. So... Um, if, you know, if, for example, if we kick off a new project in a, in a SANA, automatically create the Google Drive folders for the client, right? That's something that can be automated. Um, notifications in Slack, you know, if this happens, then notify a Slack channel so that everyone knows, oh, hey, look, we just got a new client. Woohoo, ring the bell, right? We have a ring the bell channel. 
e-commerce, any e-commerce uh, sales. <laughs> James, I haven't even started yet, mate. You wait till we get the end of this call. <laughs> You'll have three automations left in the business by the time I'm finished. Um, notifications in Slack, uh, in- internal communications and internal uh, distribution of information. Mm-hmm. I'm a big fan of automating that stuff. Yeah. Client facing stuff. I have been, I have been unscrambling the egg and, and removing automations a lot. Oh, let me give an example. This happened the other day, right? In Mavericks club, uh, there's, you, you get a one-on-one call with a coach every 90 days to sit down and work out your 90 day flight plan. And last year I built this automation, which meant every, about every 75 days, well, what would happen is we would look at your date on your record and go, all right, your last flight planning call was this date, wait 75 days and then send you a reminder and go, hey, it's about time for your flight planning call. Here's the link to your coach's calendar, book in, right? The other day, a maverick turns up in my calendar and she pings me about an hour before and says, hey, we're supposed to have this flight planning call uh, I haven't revisited my flight plan. I think it would be a good idea if I revisit my flight plan before we have this call. And I said, yes, that would be an excellent idea. She goes, great, let's reschedule. I'll do the flight plan. I'll reach out to you next week and we'll reschedule. I said, no problem. So I dug in the automations and I'm like, the automation's broken. The automation doesn't work. I mean, it works, but the messaging's all wrong. The message, first of all, the message should be, this is your quarterly flight planning call. Make sure you revisit the flight plan before you jump on a call with your coach. By the way, here's a video that reminds you how to walk through the flight plan and here's some coaching to help you get through the flight plan and come up with your next 90-day plan, right? I said to Emily, let's turn that off. Let's just have the client success team, Michelle and Charmaine, let's just have those guys reach out to a maverick. Let's put a date in their calendar. We manage our members in Asana. So let's just put a date in Asana, go, you know, hey, here's their last flight planning call. In 75 days, let's reach out to them and remind them. Let's just do it manually, right? Even if we're dealing with, you know, even if we end up with 500 people in Mavericks Club, we can do that manually with the client success team. We don't need to automate that. The automation, I think the automation provided a less than awesome experience for our customer. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, let's kill it. Let's just have a human conversation. Yeah. I didn't know we were doing that. That's good to know. Yeah. I think we just, we're going to turn that automation off and we're just going to have people talk to people. So I know, imagine. So now this flies in the face of what we taught back in the blueprint, which is to automate the crap out of everything. Right. Mm -hmm. What, What, so what's changed? Why are we now saying that I think, maybe you uh, shouldn't automate think, as much? I think people get sick. You can tell when a message is automated. You know, you know when it's an automated message, especially when you already got that message once before. And you know, you're getting it again. Um, so, I think people got sick of that. We we want to be, we want to feel a little bit more special than an automated message. Mm. Yeah, I agree. I I agree. I think there's two things. I think automation has, you know, gone a little bit too far and particularly software companies and, you know, the the little in-app messages that pop up when you're in a software thing that says, oh, congratulations that you set up your first pipeline in pipe drive. Yay, confetti. And now it's time to blah, blah, blah. We used to do a lot of that stuff as well. And it's like, oh, piss off. Just get out of the way, right? Yeah. And it's it's a bit patronising. And I think it's gone... I think it's gone far enough that people f- do feel like it's not personal. Yeah, right? absolutely. I got an I got an email this morning from Summer at Bonjoro. Summer is a customer delight representative at Bonjoro, and the email said, "Hey Troy, I wanted to send you a personal message to tell you about Bonjoro's new done for you video service. Check it out. I made a video for you. I'm like, all right, I know Bonjour. I make personalized videos. So I clicked on the link and there's someone. She's holding her iPhone. She goes, hey, Troy, hope you're having a great week, blah, blah, blah. And she tells me that they've got this new done for you 
video service. And I'm like, it's great. Now, her getting the task to make a video for me was probably automated. automated yes, absolutely. She's probably got a list that's just coming up, make a video for Troy, make a video for Pete, make a video for Charmaine, make a video for Christina, right? She's making the same video over and over again, but it's personalised. It took her less than 30 seconds. She says the same script and she just inserts name, right? right? That's not automated, but the task list is automated. And then all she does is she finishes the video and goes, bang, send, and it sends to my email address. All that's automated, right? The creation of the landing page, all that's automated, right? But her making the video is not automated. And what I like about this is that Bonjoro have automated everything except what the human should do, which is communicate and talk to another human. Everything else is automated. I love Bonjoro because you literally click a button and say, hey, Pete, just wanted to say welcome to Team Accelerator. Super excited to have you here. Blah, 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 blah. If you've got any questions, do this, blah, blah, blah. Uh, check it out and, uh, you know, see us here. Bye. Bang. And then everything else is automated, right? Dave Foy did that and it blew me away. Yeah. Dave and I did a fair bit of that with high ticket sales funnels, actually. We got overwhelmed when we launched that. We'd log in and just have like dozens of people to send videos to and we we split it up. We shared it. So I, so they've automated everything except what the human should do, which I like. Yeah. I think the other thing that's happened is the pandemic, right, is – Ah, maybe, yeah. Is, I, I had a call yesterday with someone and uh, with one of our Mavericks and I said, hey, man, I hope you don't mind, but I'm going to turn my video off because I'm going to go for a walk while I have this call on the phone because I am sick of looking at the internet. I'm just, I'm just sick of looking at screens, and I don't think very well when I'm looking at a screen, right? They say your best ideas come to you in the shower because you're not on the keyboard looking at the screen. Right. So I said, I'm just going to go for a walk. And he said, yeah, no worries, man. So we had a great call yesterday. We had a fantastic conversation about job scorecards and outcomes and KPIs and responsibilities and I wasn't looking at him on the screen. I was talking on the phone. So the pandemic, I think, has people have been stuck looking at Zoom, right, Or and they've been bombarded with messages. Everyone's come online. Business have come online. Gyms have come online. Yoga classes have come online. Everything's come online. And we're more overwhelmed with automated messages now more than ever. So we're getting tired of automation. Then the pandemic happens. Right. And so I think now what people in, in our experience, what people want more than anything is they just want to talk to someone. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. We we we're seeing that in our when we do our sales process, right? For for yeah. agency Mavericks and for my own agency. Like the more I talk, the sooner I can get somebody on the phone, the better chances I have because they do want to talk to people. They're yeah. tired of getting emails. Nobody, everybody hates email. We always have. Yeah, so. that's right. What one of the so he, here's an example uh, of here's an example of how to use automation and human activity in a in a that sales process. For example, we're going to do a deep dive on this. I don't know exactly when it is. I'm not going to say too much about who's coming up in terms of our guests, but it might be next week. I'm not sure. It's either next week or I think it's next week. Actually, we've got a, we're doing a deep dive into our sales process and some automations. We've got some really cool shit we're going to show you But one of the things that we do is we have a request a callback button on our website that people, you know, if they click that button, you leave your name, phone number and email address. One of the things that we do is we text you, we automate this. If you request a call back on our website, we text you immediately saying, hey, Pete, saw that you requested a call on our website. Have you got five minutes for a quick chat? Now, the word Pete is a placeholder. It's a merge field, right? Hey, contact first name because they've opted in. Hey, Pete, saw that you requested a call back on our website. Have you got five minutes now for a quick chat? We, we wrote that message once. Someone opts in. They come into our CRM, it kicks off that sequence, we send that text message, and then we wait. And if they reply, we then check their reply for a positive keyword. So sure thing, yes, absolutely. It uses uh, a natural 
language AI to go and have a look at what they've said. And if they are positive and say, yes, they're free for a call, then we ping that to a salesperson straight away and go, hey, call Pete. And then someone picks up the phone and calls them. All right. So we don't have to sit there and watch 24 hours a day to see people coming in. Mm-hmm. Right. We just get a notification. Hey, someone's up for a call. And then Dioza or Robert or Pete or whatever will we'll call them. Right. Now, sometimes this can go wrong, right? Yes. <laughs> like the other day, the other day someone exactly. comes in and Pete calls them and then they get an automation. I literally, right. I literally saw it come up that so and so requested a callback. So I said, well, shit, okay, I'm available. So I texted yeah. him. We had a text conversation. Then we yeah. had a phone conversation. And then he got an automated text. <laughs> yeah. And the reason he got the automated text is because the automation, what we realized is that the automation didn't have a condition in it to say, if somebody responds yeah. to a message, cancel the automation. Because Pete beat the automation. Pete basically texted the guy. The guy responded. And then the automated text happened. Great. So – Again, we just got to fix that yeah. that that condition, that trigger. So that text message, the reason we automate the first text message is because we don't want to sit there and watch it 24 hours a day to make sure that we're jumping on people, right? And that we're, that we're connecting with people if they request the callback. And if someone requests a callback on our website, they are the hottest lead yes. that you've got. So we want to contact them within five minutes. There's a whole thing I won't bore you, but there's a whole study that MIT did uh, basically that, you know, if you contact a prospect within five minutes of them expressing interest that with that five minutes is the metric. If you contact them within five minutes, there's like a 8,000% chance more likely that they're wow. going to become a client. So I don't know, some fucking thing. It's wow. ridiculous. Yeah. 42% of all statistics are made up. So it doesn't matter, right. but the, you basically in, massively increase your chance of them becoming a client. If you communicate with them within five minutes, right? What we don't do is like, as soon as they respond, then, the, then, then we don't, automate anything else we just get on the call and we don't ask them a bunch of questions well where are you and how big is your team and how much revenue are we doing we don't automate any of that shit we just want to have a conversation with them mm. right so one thing i do want to show one thing i do want to i want to give you an example here let me just uh share my screen this is the anti-follow-up sequence that we taught way back in the blueprint and this is a slightly updated version that we teach in sales accelerator right but i want to run through this and give you, show you some of the emails that we put in our anti-follow-up sequence and that we teach, and then show you some of them that maybe shouldn't be automated and why, and talk about what to do instead, right? So the uh, basically what happens is after we do a sales call with someone, if they don't pull the trigger straight away, then what we want to do is we want to nurture them, and this is specifically for this example sequence here is specifically for uh, website, pitching a website project, yeah. project to someone, right? They don't pull the trigger on the call and they're like, oh, well, we're going to need to think about this and talk to the board and get some funding and blah, 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 blah. Then we want to nurture that prospect without being annoying. And so what we do is we give you this sequence and we'll talk about some of the things that you can automate and some of the things that you maybe shouldn't. So send this email the day after the strategy call and the email basically is, our process. Hey, Pete, I thought you might uh, like to see the process we use to launch websites. And then we just put a PDF to an infographic here. It's a great resource that we use here to make sure everything is considered and nothing is missed. Hope you find it helpful. I hope you find it useful. You could totally automate that. No problem. It's a day after the strategy call. It looks personal. You could totally automate it. Again, this is placeholder content. You would take this and you would put your own content in here. We're not actually talking about the content of the emails. We're talking about whether or not you should automate them. This is two days after the strategy call. So this is like the this is like you've had the strategy call the day after we send that email that we just talked about. The next day we send this, right? And again, the content doesn't matter, but the subject line is landing pages. Hey, Pete, I found this the other day. I just had to share it with you. Mm, that messaging I'd probably fix. Um, it sums up everything that makes the perfect landing page on a website and presents it in a beautiful way and then a link to an infographic. I hope you find it useful. Right? Again, we're just we're just being helpful here. We're not asking for anything. We're just being helpful, right? I would probably rewrite the content on this email and make it a bit more personal and a bit more authentic, but I would t- totally automate this email, no problem. So Unless we, we are being helpful, but we're also trying to stay front of mind without being 
desperate. Correct. Yeah. That's the I would point. automate this unless they'd responded to the email I sent the day before. If they'd responded to the email I sent the day before, I might take them out of the automation and then just have a conversation with them in my inbox on email, right? So what I then might do is I might – Take this thing, I might take them out of the automation and go, oh, hey, Pete, I'm glad you found that useful. By the way, um, I know we talked about landing pages the other day on our call. I found this as well. Uh, this is something we use on a regular basis to make sure that we're building landing pages, you know, based on best practices. Check it out. And then I would just send this a link to a landing page blog post, right? So if they'd responded, then I would take them out of the automation because then what you want to do is you want to, you don't want them to get the same, you don't want to get them an email at the same time every day because they know it's automated. So I would respond to them organically, right? Uh, it's just another, it's just the same kind of email. It just it helps them educate them about SEO. If you've taught, if you've spoken to them about SEO, right? This is four days after the strategy call. So now we're kind of waiting a couple of days. And again, if they've responded to any of the previous emails, I'd take them out of the automation. I'd just have a conversation in the inbox. Otherwise, this would be weird. If they're, they're like, fuck, I just spoke to you yesterday, dude, about landing pages, and now you're, this feels like an automated message, right? So I, I would have that condition in the automation. Here, I would not automate sending this email. Never. Right? In fact, we have a note here that says, if you use a CRM, we recommend not automating this email, Right? Oftentimes, you will have had a communication from the prospect, and if so, this email will seem untimely and out of place. Instead, automate a reminder to yourself that this email should be sent That's exactly manually. Right. That's exactly right. Yeah, You may have already booked in another call with the person to collect their money or to finalize details on the, on the statement of work or proposal or something. Who knows? So mm -hmm. how stupid would it be to then get this message. <laughs> so the purpose of this email, by the way, is just to say, Hey, we've been doing some, you know, the team and I've been doing some more research on your project and we can't wait to share our findings with you. That's intrigue, right? It's like, Hey, we've been doing some work in our, some of our systems and we found some awesome keywords that we should totally go after. Can't wait to share them with you. I'm not going to tell you what they are. I just want you to be intrigued. Right? So when the doctor calls you and says, Pete, uh, we've got the results back from your ECG. Can you please call me? Right. Well, that's kind of going to go to the top of my priority list, right? <laughs> I want to make sure I'm not having a heart attack. Um, they never give you the results over the phone. No. I've also been chatting with some of my colleagues who are very excited about this project. We've got a great team of designers, developers, and SEO, blah, 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 and social media experts. Here's the thing. Our schedule is filling fast, and I want to make sure we get the opportunity to work together. I wouldn't say that. I, I would say something authentic like, hey, man, it's like November if you want us to start work on this before Christmas, you've got to let us know now. Otherwise, we're going to fill the spot with with someone else, right? Um, we, we work on a first come, first serve basis. Are you ready to, you know, like, are you ready to go? I wouldn't say you're ready to create something amazing together. Sounds a bit kumbaya. Uh, are, you, are you ready to go, you know, Pete? So what you would do is instead of automating this email, you would automate a task reminder to send this email and then you would have this saved as a canned response in in yep. Gmail, or you have this saved as a snippet in your notebook or wherever you save your snippets. Actually, I have it automated so that that gets sent to me as my reminder to. Then I'm not looking for it. It's right there. There you go. There you go. Martin, is there going to be an undated PDF? No, I'm not sure what you mean, undated or updated PDF. I'm not sure. Um, but no, no, probably not. Yeah, it's all, about, this it's is all about using the concept, not our words. That's right. This is this is the theory. This is the so take this, tweak it, and make it your own. Yeah. Um, you know, and so then again, like if they've responded to anything, I wouldn't have them in an automation. These again, these next three emails are just positioning. Hey, if you'd like to learn about keyword research, check out this training at LinkedIn, right? Um, social media, you know, whatever. Suggested reading. Here's a great book I read. Blah blah blah. Whatever. Now again, if they've already, if you've already talked about this book in the and they're like, oh man, I love Simon Sinek. It's amazing. Blah blah. Then you wouldn't send this email, would you? Because you look like a schmuck. Like, dude, what are you talking about? I told you about that book, and now you're telling me about that book. That's weird. Uh, and again, the magic email is something that you wouldn't automate. You yeah. would set yourself a task reminder to send this. Yeah. Make sense. Absolutely. 
So cool. Ideally, ideally, you'd have some some way to automate that. If they responded to any email in the chain, it just shuts it down and tells you that it shut it down. Yeah. 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 And if your CRM doesn't do that, then get a new CRM. No, if your right. CRM doesn't do that, then you just what you can do, like in most CRMs, you can just go into a client yeah, a customer record and go remove right. from workflow yeah. or remove yeah. from automation and just take them out. It takes like five seconds. Right. Questions. So basically the too long didn't read version is this automate whatever the robots can do internally to speed up your process and your workflow and keep the sharing of information within the organization consistent and don't try and automate too much. That's client facing. Like yeah. just, I'm just a big fan of getting on the phone and talking to people these days as much as humanly possible. Just so talk. In, in fact, my, my care plan has one automated message. As soon as they send something to the, to the ticketing system, it replies and says, Hey, yes, this is an automated message. I know I hate them too, but you'll be, we just wanted you to know that we received it and you'll be mm. receiving a, a human response very shortly. And that's yeah. it. Exactly. Love it. And it's transparent. And it's like, yeah. you know, I, I, so we, if I text, if I see someone come into our system and they're not going to get an automated text because they've come in from a different channel, which is a whole other conversation, I'll send them a text and I'll say, this is not an automated message, by the way, I'm really here. And people respond back and go, I remember <laughs> when Kath Hughes uh, joined the blueprint a long time ago, back in 2014 or whatever it was, I would send her emails and she would send back, dear automated Troy, blah, 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 blah. And then I would send her emails back going, hey, Cass, blah, blah, by the way, uh, this is not automated. This is really me. And, and eventually I got, we connected on Skype and eventually I called her on Skype and she's like, I can't believe you're talking to me. And I'm like, I did, none of that was automated. That was actually me talking to you. Right. right. And she was blown away because she just expected that everything was automated. Right. Yeah. Hey, James, don't make any decisions on a CRM until you see the agency hour next week. Yeah, I Trust agree. me. Trust me on this one. <clears throat> um, and uh, one thing, one automate, it's not really an automation, but it's a pet peeve. I hate when you sign up for a webinar and the webinar has been pre-recorded, but they act like oh yeah, it's live. Like, oh, yeah. don't do that. People, don't do that. Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah, that's that's awful. Mavericks don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> that's awful. I tried that once and it was a bit like folk dancing. I didn't like it, so I never did it again. Um, in fact, you know, he, he, like here's another thing. I, I get emails. I don't sign up for webinars anymore because I don't have time no. and I realise webinars are bullshit. Um, I'd rather get on the phone and just talk to someone. Uh, but the last time I signed up for a webinar, I got an email the following day from – so let's say there was the influencer, right? Let's call him Mac. True. And then he had his then he had his minion, right? Who Pete. was Steve. I got an email from Steve the day after the webinar. It said, "Hey Troy, Mac just sent me a note saying that he saw you signed up for the webinar but didn't watch it all and he wanted me to make sure that you got it, right? And below that email was an email forwarded from Mac to Steve saying, "Hey Steve, uh, Troy signed up for the webinar, but something went wrong and he didn't watch it all. Can you make sure that he gets access to it, please? Right? That is a tactic that is taught in a particular course uh, by, I think Sam Ovens teaches that tactic, right? That it looks like Mac forwarded the email to Steve and had Steve reach out. It's complete bullshit that the copy and paste email below is copied and pasted with my name in a merge field, right? It's complete Bullshit. Yep. I emailed the guy back and went, dude, don't do that to me. You look like a schmuck and, <laughs> and like treat me with a bit more respect, please. You know, like don't, I didn't come down in the last shower, man. <laughs> so, you know, I hate that shit. Uh, fake countdown timers and fake bloody scarcity stuff. I don't like it at all. Um, so, what are you guys going to unautomate now as a result of? <laughs> right. What are we turning off? <laughs> yeah. This is, the, this is the unautomation agency hour. What are you guys going to turn off now? Let us know in the comments or if there's something else that you're automating, 
uh, that you're that is really working for you, let us know in the chat. I'm just gonna look some something up here. <laughs> And uh, next week we are going to doing uh, a deep dive on our sales process. And <laughs> Anthony says, "There goes there goes my Zapier account." <laughs> Excellent. Save money, and um, uh, we're going to be doing a deep dive on our sales process, and we're also going to be doing a deep dive on the CRM that we are using, and we are also going to be giving you uh, a an amazing gift next week. Let me just say that. I'm not going to I'm not going to say too much, but let me just say next week we are going to be giving you an amazing gift. Uh if you don't have a CRM, then don't do anything before next week. For God's sake, don't buy any lifetime deals over the weekend because we've got something coming for you next week which is amazing. And if you do have a CRM, then get ready to sh- get ready to change because we're going to show you something next week that's going to blow your mind and we've got a great deal coming for you next week um uh any other any questions from you guys you gonna be okay with next week without me oh uh, you know i think we'll i think we'll be okay i think we'll we'll, okay. we'll get through it it won't be the same but we'll get through it i think we'll uh i think we'll be okay i think we'll be all right you're gonna where are you next week why are you not here um why am I not here? What's the date? Oh yeah, it's it's my annual it's my annual take a day off and go uh, Christmas shopping with my wife day. Ah, uh, got it. And do the whole um, lunch thing and all that stuff. So yeah. So I so I'll be I'm away next week, but I'll be doing the agency hour from I'm going down the coast next week for a few That's days right. just to get out of town and get away from everything and do some planning and strategizing for next year. I'll be in a beautiful uh, place down the coast, but I'm going to take my gear with me and I'll do the agency hour from down the coast next week. And you go Christmas shopping. I'll go Christmas shopping. Yeah. Make sure you buy me something for Christmas, all right? something really expensive. Um, cool. All right. Well, here we are, 57 minutes. It's almost, it's the agency almost the hour. The agency's almost hour. And uh, this has been fun. And uh, yeah, next week we've got something really cool coming. We're going to show you our sales process. We're going to show you what, what we automate, what we don't. We're going to give you some numbers to look at, and we're going to give you an amazing deal on uh, on a sales CRM that we are using and that we recommend that you use as well. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right, Crispy Butter, have a great right. week. Enjoy Thanksgiving, my friend. Well, thank you, and we'll talk to you next week. Take care. Bye now. Bye, guys.